The CloudWatch team just released a brand new, very, very useful feature that I think a lot more people should know about. And the feature is called CloudWatch Live Tail. And this new enhancement allows you to see real-time log data as it's been ingested into CloudWatch from your applications. So previously, this used to be a really frustrating experience. You'd have to go into the CloudWatch console, go into the log group section, find the log stream that you're looking for, and then try and see the data as it streams in at the bottom. But as you know, there can be many different log streams in CloudWatch, so it's hard to kind of collate all that data together to get a real-time up-to-date view of what your application is doing across potentially many different machines. So that's what this feature really helps with. It allows you to see up-to-date almost live, I say almost here, I'll get to that a little bit later, but almost live cloud entry information as it's being put into CloudWatch and just seeing it kind of scroll down your screen. For those of you that operate on Linux boxes, this is similar to tail-f that allows you to basically view the end of a log file and just get that data streaming down your screen. It only works for one log file at a time though, unless you do some Linux magic. But anyways, that's what this feature is. Very, very useful for two different reasons. The first reason, for deployments. Now, when you're doing a deployment, you, well, at least what I would do when I used to do deployments is, you know, of course you have metrics and alarms and all that, but I would be tailing the box that I'm doing the deployment on to see the logs as they were coming in as that machine was starting up. I wanted to know immediately if I was seeing any types of errors or exceptions or anything abnormal happening as soon as the first request came into my box. So that is the first reason this is a useful feature. The second one, and probably the most important one for most of you that are watching is in terms of testing and debugging, specifically if you're using AWS Lambda functions. So it, with AWS Lambda functions, let me show you kind of what your workflow would probably look like. So for example, here we are with a Lambda function and what a typical user's workflow may look like if they are using the AWS console is maybe they'll come in here, make a couple code changes. I don't know, maybe add a new import, just adding a comment here for demonstration. Then they would deploy that application. And then the thing with Lambda is that every time you deploy it, a new container instance is spawned, which also means a new log stream is created. So what the user would have to do is they go into the monitor section, go into your logs, you'll probably already have this open at this point, but you'll see here that new log streams get created all the time. And you can see I have four because I did four deployments recently with this Lambda. So you always have to come back here, click on the one at the top, look at your log, see what's going on. Oh, I made a mistake. Go back to your Lambda function, make another code change, you know, deploy this thing again, and then go back to CloudWatch and just repeat this process over and over again. If this sounds familiar, then this new feature is a million times better. So enough talk about kind of the benefits of this thing. Let me show you this thing in action. So if you go in to the CloudWatch section of the console like I am in here. There's a brand new section here called Livetail under the log section over on your left-hand panel. So if you click on this, you can get access to the new feature. So when you get to this page, the first thing that you wanna do is look at the filter section over on the left-hand side here. And this is where you select the different log groups that you'd like to access. And you can look for multiple different log groups at once. You can see these are all the different log groups that I have access to. So I'm just gonna type in the one for my demo Lambda here. So we're gonna click on that. You can also select the particular log streams that you want to search for. So if you're looking through a specific one or just interested in what's going on on one container or one log stream in Lambda's case, you can narrow that down if you'd like. If you don't select one and you just leave it as default, it's gonna apply across all, which also can be very useful. And then as well, there's this concept of filter patterns. And with filter patterns, you can say, I want to look for this particular term. You can do this term and this term or this term or this term. Uh, you can also do like exclusions as well. So everything but this term. So there's a lot of potential here. You can learn more by clicking this button here on the right and you can see like the different types of syntax that you can apply. Also very, very useful. So let me show you now what this looks like when you run it. So when you click on apply filters now, and nothing's gonna come up initially, but I'm gonna go and invoke this Lambda function over on the side now. And I just click the button right now. So let's start counting 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, so about seven seconds it took. This is about in line with what I saw when I was uh, experimenting on the side. It was between around six to 10 seconds in terms of latency for when 
you kind of publish an event or create a log entry to when it shows up here. But as you can see, this is a lot easier feature. Now I'm, I'm gonna click this again a couple more times here on the right hand side, and you'll see this data just scrolls through and almost immediately as it's happening. And it's very, very useful. So you get all this stuff up to date. I believe it's in like descending order. Uh, yeah, it's descending. So the stuff at the bottom is always gonna be the most recent. So very, very handy. Now there's a couple other things that you can do as well. So you can do highlights. So if you don't wanna filter, but you just wanna highlight certain text that's in this particular page, you can put it up here. Here. So maybe, um, I don't know, database or something and press enter. So you can see all these different lines have database in it. Uh, so you can see attempting transactional save to database. So this is another kind of value add feature as well. And in terms of some other actions that you have access to, you can export this. So you can export to clipboard, to CSV, to JSON, um, also down. Actually, these are copied to clipboards, uh, but these are also download supported as well. Now, in terms of the pricing, you can see there's a little bit of a ticker going on here at the top right. So we've been doing this for one minute, 30 seconds. Now, the pricing for this feature is pretty reasonable. So the good news is that you get access to 1,800 minutes per month, which translates to approximately one hour of usage per day, which is absolutely free and will always be free as part of the AWS free tier. And if you go over that limit, then it costs just one cent per minute. So very reasonable, I think, and very useful as well. So this this is the new feature CloudWatch Live Tail. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments section below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.